Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we're making these granny rectangles that match up and line up with five round grannies. So when they're joined, they join up perfectly great like this for our toxic granny project or you can also just use them by themselves and just do um, like a tile work or a parquet with the rectangles it'd be super cute any which way you would like to do it it's also a great stash buster so just start with your smallest amounts of yarn and then use your bigger as the rows increase in size and it's five rows, same as your five row granny, but they're five row rectangles. We're also changing color and we're doing a bit of an invisible join. We're joining in the corner so you don't see any weird chain coming up along the side of your work. You're welcome to change colors as often as you want or even just make uh, solid color ones without changing your color. You can do whatever you would like. So let's get started. To make these rectangles, I am using whatever scrap yarns I have laying around. I'm just using four weight worsted acrylic yarn. And the hook I'm using is a six millimeter. Generally, on your yarn label, it'll tell you, it'll be a little picture of a crochet hook and a number beside it. That would be the hook to use with that particular yarn. Some yarn doesn't have the crochet hook. They just have needles, like knitting needles. So crochet hooks are usually one number bigger than that. So if it says a uh, size five, knitting needle it would be a six millimeter crochet hook usually something like that but just use whatever hook you want to use with your yarn the bigger the hook the softer and more pliable and flexible the blanket will be the smaller the hook the more tight and stiff it would be so maybe for a pet blanket or something like that or a pet mat a smaller hook is better and something for a child or something super squishy and soft a bigger hook so up to you whatever you want to use I'm using four weight acrylic and a size six millimeter crochet hook So start by making a slip knot, any which way you make a slip knot. I just make an X on two fingers. Oh good lord. So we're going to start by making a chain of 24 and just start by making a slip knot. I just make an X on my two fingers and poke it through on the back side and pull it up and down. Shrink it and put it on my hook. So now do your chain 24. So just push your hook onto your yarn and bring it up, turn it and bring it through. And we're not gonna make it really tight. So just count to 24. So this is two, three, four, five, and 24. So there's my chain 24 and we're gonna go into the fourth stitch. So I, I hold my chain to the side like I would be crocheting and I just look at this bottom loop. So there's one, two, three, and here is four. I'm gonna go right into the fourth chain. So I'm gonna just push my hook right in here and leave these three chains, one, two, and three, I'm gonna leave them empty. So wrap your yarn and go into that fourth chain from your hook. I push it into the bottom so I have two loops on my hook grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. So our chain three counts as a double crochet in this pattern and we've made a double crochet so that counts as two. We're gonna make one more into the same spot. So wrap your yarn and go in, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two like that. Now into the next stitch we're gonna do the same thing. Oh. I have to chain, right? Yes. So now chain two, one and two. Wrap your yarn and go into the very next chain. So I'm gonna count the bottom loops again. I've gone into this bottom loop. You can see I have yarn inside that little area. So this here is my next stitch, my next V. So I'm just gonna poke in right on top of that bottom loop, just in there. And we're gonna make three double crochets just into this little spot. So just poke your hook in. Again, two loops on your hook and make three double crochets. One, two, and three. 
like that. So we've made the end of the rectangle. This is the end and now we're working along the side. So now no more chaining until we get to the end and we're going to go into every third chain. So we're going to skip two. So we've gone into this loop here, or that stitch. So here's this next stitch. That's one. Here's two. And we're going to go into three. This one here is three. So just push your hook in on top of that bottom loop. So wrap your yarn and go into the third stitch and make three double crochets into the same spot. There's one, two, and three. So we're just building along our chain like that. Wrap your yarn, skip two, so again, look at your bottom loops. You've made one into this one. You can see all those stitches there. So here's one, two, and here's the third. So we're just going to go right into that one there and do three double crochets. And we're going to do this all the way along our chain. So each third chain gets three double crochets. There's two, there's three, So we're building this little row. So now keep going, making three double crochets into the third chain all the way down this row. So getting close to the end of the row, we'll still skip two, one and two, and then we're, we're going to have one extra chain left. That is exactly what we want. That's going to where we're going to build the end of the rectangle. So into the second to last chain will be your last set of three double crochets chain two for your corner and now into this last chain push your hook in grab your yarn and bring it back and make your three double crochets into this chain into that space like that chain two and now we're going to work along this side going all the way back and we're just going to mirror exactly what we did on the other side. So this is going to be the actual end of our rectangle and now we have these nice big spaces going back along our work. So into this nice space there we're going to do a shell and into this one. So right where all of your double crochets have pinched together is where we're going to make this exact same thing going back along the other side. So each one of those spots gets three double crochets and this is the only spot we're doing chaining is on this on the corner here, the corner here, and again when we get to this corner over there. So all all we're doing is double crochets. So right into this next space, three double crochets. Oopsies. One, two, and three. And into the next, just push in and you'll find that loop of yarn waiting for you. Two and three and the same thing all the way along three double crochets in the exact spot that you made your double crochets on the other side of this chain so into this last regular looking spot three double crochets And to get to, to this side here, we're going to do our chain two for our corner, so one and two. And into the top of the chain three, we're going to slip stitch. So it looks a bit different, but I can show you. These V's here, there's one, two, and three, or you can just count the loops on the side. So one, two, and three. So we're just going to go into this one at the top. We want two loops of yarn on your hook. It doesn't really matter how you get them. I just push straight into the stitch and get two loops on my hook. Grab your yarn and bring it back. Turn your hook, slide it through for a slip stitch, chain one to secure your yarn. Find a pair of scissors. Oh, right here. Cut your yarn, pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. So that is the center round of our rectangular granny. It looks exactly like that. Your ends we're going to have to sew in. This one we can work over. So how to work over 
is we're just going to work it back along this corner along the chain two so just into the back loop I'm just picking up the one loop on the far side and bringing it through and pushing my hook into the next one and bringing it through and into the next one bringing it through I do it one more time I do it into the center of this first shell so I'm gonna do it five, four times like that give it a stretch you don't want it too tight now flip it back the other way put your hook in from behind and loop it back through so when we go around this corner we're gonna go over this tail twice and we can cut it off after we're done the next round because there'll be 12 strands of yarn going over it back and forth so it'll be quite secure. This other one we're going to have to sew in with a needle. That one kind of sucks. So next, pick your next color so I again go by what I have the least amount of so I think it's yellow. I don't want to join in the same corner where I finished last time because of the extra yarn. So I'm just going to pick a different corner and I also want to flip my work. So you can see these nice little V's facing up along the edge and these nice little penny pastas all lined up for your posts. Your stitches look all nice and pretty. I want to flip that over and I want to be looking at macaroni. Just a whole bunch of macaroni in a cooking pot staring up at you we want to be looking at working into the back side. That's going to keep our rectangle from twisting and looking like it's not actually square. Flipping your work every round keeps your square or rectangle looking like a square or rectangle. It won't twist. So that is why we turn our work. And I'm just going to go into a different corner over here. Put my hook into that corner space. Loop of yarn on my hook leaving about a six inch tail just so I can work it in later. Bring your hook through and slip stitch with both strands to join your new color. Drop your tail, we're going to work over it a smudge, and chain two, one and two. I count this, I join my yarn this way and I count this join as my first chain, but if you are joining your yarn in a different way you're going to want to do a chain three. This is going to count as a double crochet. So wrap your yarn and two more double crochets into this corner, one and two. You drop your tail now, wrap your yarn and into each of these spaces going along we're going to do three double crochets into each, no chaining because we are on the side of our work, we're only chaining in our corners. So three double crochets into each stitch. And if you're not sure of your stitches, I'll just show you in slow motion. And just do that all the way along this side, three double crochets into each space and I'll meet you at the end of this row. So we've reached the end of this side, so now into the corner space we're going to do a corner and corners are three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets all into the same spot. So just like normal your first three double crochets, no chaining, just three double crochets and now do your chain two, so one and two and I kind of rotate my work a bit so I'm working along the new side and now three more double crochets into the same corner spot if you need more space you don't want to start working over your chain or your double crochets so grab your corner and grab your stitches and just kind of push them back and that'll give you a bunch more space to work your double crochets so they line up nice and pretty side by side so there's two and here's three so there's our six and our chain two made our nice little pointy corner. 
So now we're going to jump straight across and I'm going to hold that tail over so we're working over it. And no chaining here, we're just jumping straight over into the next corner space and we're going to do the same thing. So three double crochets, there's two and here's three. Chain two, one and two and three more double crochets into that corner space. And remember you can push your stitches back if you need more space. Just give it a little tug. They'll slide back. So there's our sixth double crochet and we finished that edge of our of our granny rectangle. So now we're working back along this side. Three double crochets into each of these spots and I'll meet you when we get to the corner. So now our work looks like this. And we're just going to do another corner into this corner space. So three double crochets. Chain two. And three more double crochets into the same spot. Two and three. Now we're going to jump straight over to finish off this round. So wrap your yarn and jump straight over into that corner spot where we joined and do three double crochets. Two and three. Now you can decide if you are continuing with this yarn color or doing a new yarn color. I'm going to be continuing in this color. So to continue, do a chain one and now we're going to join with a single crochet. So we're still going to join in the same spot that we would be if we were doing a slip stitch. One, two, three. So into the third chain going up, we're just going to go into that stitch, two loops of yarn on your hook, grab your yarn and bring it back. But instead of doing a slip stitch, we're going to wrap our yarn and take off two. And that just leaves us in the center of that corner so we can hide our join as we go up and we won't see a big chain going up along the side of our work and we also don't have to slip stitch over to the corner space. So it's a really good way of joining if you're continuing with your color. Chain three to get your height. One, two, three. And I'm just holding that spot open with my fingers and turn your work. So now we're going to be working back starting in the same corner. We've done our first chain three which counts as our first double crochet. So two more double crochets into this corner space. One and two. And now I'm just going to get a stitch marker and I'm just going to put it into this corner spot. Just so I know when I'm coming around that that is a corner and that's where I'm going to join my yarn. Because if we just keep going, it can look totally flat and we can just keep going in a spiral and forget that we needed to join our yarn here. So if you are just learning to crochet or just learning this pattern, using a stitch marker here is great. You can also use um, a, a bobby pin, like a hair pin or a paper clip or a scrap of yarn. You can use anything at all. I just really like these super cute stitch markers. So now into the next space, that's just a regular side of our rectangle. So we're going to do three double crochets. One, two, and three. And into the next corner, we're going to build a corner. So our corners are always going to be the same. They're always three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. So there's our three our chain two, pull your stitches back to give yourself some more space in that corner and three more double crochets. One, two, and three. Now work along this side, three double crochets into each of these uh, spaces in between your, your shells from the previous round. Into the corners, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. And I'll meet you when we get to our stitch marker. When you get to your stitch marker, you can take it out and that's going to tell you that you need to go into that space and make your last part of your corner, so three double crochets, because we start by doing half of your corner and we finish by doing half of our corner and that leaves us in the corner. So I'm done with this color yarn now, so I'm going to chain two, one and two, and slip stitch to join. So top of the chain three, same as before, just push your hook in, two loops of yarn on your hook, drag your yarn back through and through, and chain one to secure your yarn. 
So the slip stitch joins it and the chain one puts a knot in your yarn. So pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down. Now we can work this tail back and forth around this corner as well, just going into the back loops. So this will help us only have to sew in half of the tails that we would if we didn't do this. It's up to you, you don't have to, you can use a darning needle later. But it's a pretty quick fix and it just helps you mentally not have so many ends to do later. And this tail over here where we finished our green, we can cut that one off as well. That one we worked through. This one we still have to sew back in and this one we have to sew back in. So now we have done our three rounds. We're going to do five rounds because it's going to be matching a five round granny. So we've done one, two, three. So pick your next color. This is my next color, my smallest amount. So again, I'm going to find a corner that I haven't joined to recently. So I did this corner and that corner. And we have to turn our work. Remember, we're going to be working into the macaroni of the previous round. So I will go into this corner over here. Just push your hook in and loop of yarn on your hook. Bring it through. Slip stitch with both to join and drop your tail. Just hold it along the side of your work. We can work over it for a couple stitches. And chain two. If you've joined your yarn in a different way, you'll do a chain three. Wrap your yarn and two double crochets into this corner space. One and two. Drop your tail. And now into each space all the way around, we're going to be doing three double crochets into each of those spaces going around and into the corners we're going to be doing three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. So we don't have to put a stitch marker in for this round because we can see the color change so we won't just zoom over it, we know that that's the corner where we're going to join. So work your way around and I'll meet you when we get here. So back where we joined, this is our fourth round of the granny and to count your rounds you can just lay it on its any which way to be honest and from the center just count out on an angle so one two three and four so there's four rows we've done so I'm going to change my color if you're not changing your color you can join like we did with the yellow with a chain one and a single crochet to join but just finish your corner so three double crochets one two and three and because we're changing color, I'm going to do a chain two, one and two, and slip stitch into the top of the chain three to join. So just slip stitch, chain one to secure your yarn, cut your yarn, pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. And now work it back along these back loops. So there is round four finished. Now we have one more color we can pick. So remember to turn your work over. We want to be working into the back of the last round. So macaroni facing up. And pick a corner that you haven't joined to recently. So I'm going to join into this corner. So just push your hook in, loop of yarn on your hook. Bring it up and through, slip stitch with both to join. Drop your tail, just hold it along the side of your work. Chain two, one and two, and two double crochets into that corner space to get started. One and two. So we worked over our tails for those two stitches. Now we're gonna drop our tail and just keep going all the way around like we always have been. Three double crochets into each of these spaces along the sides. And for our corners, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets into our corner spaces. And I'll meet you back when you get to the end of this round. At the corner, we'll just finish off our corner. So three double crochets into the corner space. And chain two, because we've done our five rounds now, we're finished slip stitch to the top of that chain three. So just push your hook into that V, getting two loops on your hook, and bring your yarn through, turn your hook, and bring your yarn through. Chain one, and cut your yarn. 
pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. And you can also work in this tail while you're here and before you forget to do it. Where we've finished our yarn, where we've finished the color, we can cut those ones off because we worked them through the back loops. Where we've joined our color, we have to still work those in. So how I would do that is just thread your needle skip the first loop of the color so matching the color but skip the first loop and just slide it underneath all of those double crochets along the corner and pull it through like that not too tight you want that to still to line up nice and straight and then do the same thing going back the other way something like that pull it back through so it's gone forward back forward back technically three times because we also went over it in the beginning and cut your tail so that's what I would do for all the ones where you joined your yarn and then this one here in the beginning I would do the same thing but I'd go around this whole loop let me show you how to do that just to shrink it down a smudge And now we can cut that one off as well. And it also helped to shrink up that space in the beginning where we joined. So I hope you enjoyed that video. 